It looks like Michaela's career may be in some trouble with the news of this possible TikTok ban, and a lot of fans of Michaela have been wondering what she plans on doing if it actually happens, and she's finally addressing it. It's a mess, so let's get into it. With all the news recently about TikTok possibly getting banned in America, there's been a lot of conversation around what these influencers are going to do. During lockdown, a lot of new influencers rose to fame and have managed to have very successful and lucrative careers because of TikTok. The algorithm is unique, it pushes your content out to a wider audience compared to other platforms, and while it's true they could always branch out and go to other platforms like YouTube, that's not always easy, especially for the influencers like Michaela. Michaela has built a massive platform on TikTok thanks to the algorithm. Michaela has gone viral many times for her content maybe being shocking or her doing something that's out of the ordinary and catches people's attention. Kim Kardashian had this absolutely stunning, sexy look at the Met Gala and you can recreate it at home. And she's also got a lot of negative attention from all the drama that she's got herself in. I literally just finished work and it's 519. Try being an influencer for a day. Try it. And then once you've done that, you flip the brush to the side and you use the hook comb to basically separate. This is one coat. Okay, I'm gonna add a second. Look at the length. Do you see that? I am speechless and I'm not sure anyone's gonna ever be able to compete with this mascara. <laughs> People who didn't even know about Michaela heard about Lashgate and were being fed content about it on their For You page, and unfortunately, even though it was a negative situation, she still grew from it. But that's not really how the algorithm works on other platforms, and when this TikTok ban started to become more serious, a lot of her fans have been asking her, what's next? Bill is passed, and without the objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. And with that vote, the House of Representatives has decided to require TikTok to separate from its China-based owner ByteDance or be banned from U.S. app stores in six months. Supporters of the bipartisan bill cited national security concerns, arguing that the Chinese government could force ByteDance to hand over the data of its 170 million American users. The only other platform she's really active on is Instagram. A lot of creators have already branched out and diversified across many, many different platforms, but Michaela is very dedicated to TikTok. She finally addressed what she would do if a ban actually did happen, and it sounds like she's really not that worried. What's going to happen to your career if TikTok gets banned? Well, I guess I'll be shit out of luck. No, seriously, I think when you choose to be an influencer, it's never like, oh, I'm going to do this forever. This is like my end all be all Korea. I think it's fair to say it would be devastating if TikTok got taken away. I've been doing this for four years as of this week and it's my dream job and I, I absolutely love what I do with my whole hat. Here's the thing, my passion isn't TikTok, right? My passion is to create, to create content, to teach makeup, to do beauty videos. And I can do that from any platform. I can go to Snapchat, YouTube, Instagram Reels. Now, when Michaela said she could easily switch over to Snapchat or YouTube, I was confused because I've been under the impression that Michaela has a YouTube channel. There's a YouTube channel called Michaela Makeup. It has over 600,000 subscribers, which is incredibly difficult to reach on YouTube without trying. And for years now, they've been posting re-uploads of Michaela's videos. I just thought that this was Michaela and she was making extra revenue by reposting on YouTube, but she's saying it's not her. Someone commented on her video and said, wait, you don't have a YouTube channel? then who the hell am I following? And Michaela said, LOL, I do not. And I'm just so confused because why would anyone be okay with someone impersonating them, reposting their content for years, and missing out on so much revenue? I mean, these videos are getting thousands of views every single day. I find it so hard to believe that Michaela would just sit by and let someone steal her content and potentially make revenue from it. We all know Michaela is very money motivated, so why is she just sitting by and letting someone use her content? Unless this actually is her and she's just pretending that it's like a fan account or something. I don't know, something seems off about that to me, but who knows. Michaela went on to recognize that switching platforms isn't as easy as it may sound. She said that she knows that she might be unsuccessful on another platform and has a backup plan if that were to be the case. 
it would be a very weird transitional period, 100%, because I, I, my main platform is TikTok, and I would have to navigate that, but that is something you're told from the beginning. Behind the scenes right now, all the influencers that you love are preparing to shift if we need to. I am not naive. I am very aware that my main audience is on TikTok. I don't even have a Snapchat or a YouTube. I don't have a presence on many social media platforms aside from TikTok. So I am fully prepared to potentially be unsuccessful on these other platforms as a content creator. Won't be easy, but it'll be fun. It's like a fresh stat. She also talked about what her goals would be if those platforms didn't work out and she had to get a regular job. Then comes the question, okay, so if it doesn't work out, then what? But I come from a family of hard work and I, I've never been afraid of hard work. Say I were to lose my career, what would I do? Well, there's a lot of things I want to do. I'm only 25. I would love to go back to school. I would love to finish my master's degree. I got halfway through and then I blew up on TikTok and I didn't finish. I would absolutely finish. I would also love to go to esthetician school. I wasn't able to do that earlier in life and I would love to do that. This career is absolutely my dream, but I have other dreams too. I would absolutely love to open my own like beauty studio or spa one day. Plus there's always the opportunity to start a beauty brand of my own. He and I have talked about opening sober houses together. There's so much I could do with my life, but for now I'm here to stay. As long as TikTok is here, I'll be here. And a lot of people have been telling her that she needs to make the jump to YouTube. Jacqueline Hill even commented and said, girl, just jump on YouTube with us OGs. And while I really hope TikTok doesn't get banned, just because of the amount of information we get from it and how many people have figured out a way to boost their small businesses and build careers from it, a lot of people are saying that it would be good for YouTube. A lot of these influencers would be frantically looking for a new platform that makes the most sense for them, and that could mean a 2016-esque beauty community finally again. The only problem is, that transition from TikTok to YouTube is going to be difficult. Going from posting a minute-long video to needing to post a full video with a thumbnail and hold the audience attention for like 10 plus minutes is a huge jump. Of course, they could do shorts, but I think a lot of them would find doing actual YouTube videos very challenging. Not to mention, not every platform is as relaxed when it comes to ads. A huge topic lately has been how bad this new generation of beauty creators are at disclosing. Michaela could no longer hide her sponsorships with a little hashtag hidden in the description. The FTC has already long caught on to YouTube creators, and we have to verbally say it, mark it as a paid promotion, and disclose it in the first line of our description box. I just can't see someone like Michaela doing that, and that could cause some major issues. I mean, Michaela has been getting called out over her undisclosed ads for over a year now, and she's made no effort to even try and improve. Just the other day, she did a sponsorship for a CC cream, and nowhere on or in the video did she disclose. If you're like me and you struggle with redness on your skin, I'm gonna show you how you can neutralize it in a matter of seconds. You don't have to put on pounds of makeup. The Arborean CC Red Correct. This is encapsulated with green pigments that counteract redness. So as you blend, it is going to begin to neutralize your skin tone. Not only that, but it has SPF 25. It is extremely soothing. It blurs and refines the texture of your skin, but looks super natural. Look at the immediate difference. And just to remind you where we started, look at that. The only place that you could find out that this was paid content was in the description box after pressing more and sorting through the hashtags. That would not fly with other platforms, and even though it's also not allowed on TikTok, I guess the FTC just hasn't totally caught up yet, but that day is gonna happen. And when it does, Michaela and other influencers who are also doing the same thing could be facing some pretty major fines. But I want to know what you guys think. Do you think TikTok is actually going to get banned this time? And if it does, could you see TikTokers like Michaela being able to shift and have the same success on another platform? Let me know and I'll see you next time.